I see far too many people making technique mistakes on the squat that could be holding them back. Here's how to fix them. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, and I'm breaking down the best technique for squatting for muscle growth. First, how much does technique actually matter? How do we know? Well, I'm actually the author on a paper that tried to answer exactly this question. How much does technique matter for muscle growth? And what's the optimal technique? For optimal technique, there are at least three important components that we've studied. First, we want to have a decent tempo. If your tempo is too fast or too slow, you could be reducing your muscle growth. According to a Schoenfeld meta-analysis from 2016, if your rep takes much longer than about eight seconds, you are reducing hypertrophy. What else do we know? Well, if your reps take much less than about one or two seconds, you are likely shooting yourself in the foot as far as hypertrophy goes. In my opinion, this means you shouldn't be dive bombing your squats. Instead, try using at least a one second eccentric and your reps should take at least two seconds according to the findings in this body of evidence. Some more speculative or emerging evidence suggests that an eccentric of at least two seconds is probably a good idea and you may want to perform your concentric phase or the lifting phase of an exercise as explosively or quickly as possible. On the other end of the spectrum, we want to make sure your reps don't take longer than about eight seconds. If your reps take this long, this can often make it difficult to put in adequate effort on each set. It also makes breathing a little bit more difficult. If your reps take eight seconds and you're only really breathing in and out at the top of each rep, you may have trouble with breathing before your target muscle group actually gets a good workout in. The second factor that is likely important in terms of technique, but that hasn't been studied as much, is making sure that one, the target muscle group is the limiting factor in the exercise, and two, that most of the production of force stems from the target muscle groups and not other muscle groups you're not really trying to target. For example, in a barbell row, you wouldn't want to swing your hips around a ton when you're really trying to target your back and not your glutes. This would just lead to unnecessary fatigue for not much additional stimulus. Why is it important that the target muscle group is the limiting factor? Well, according to a meta-analysis by Robinson and colleagues from 2023, the closer a set is taken to failure, the more muscle growth it produces. While this doesn't tell us about individual muscle groups, it does tell us that as you go closer and closer to failure, probably also on a muscle basis, you get more hypertrophy. And so in the squat, we want to make sure that the target muscle group is the thing that gives out first. In the squat, depending on your goals, that could be either the glutes and adductors and or the quadriceps. So for most people, the squat will be a tremendous quad exercise and a pretty good glute and adductor exercise. If you want to emphasize the quads in a squat, try staying more upright and going deeper into your knees to increase the moment arm even further. Avoid the good morning squat. If you want to take this one step further, you could even perform the Smith machine squat with your feet forward so that the moment arm on your quads increases while reducing the moment arm on your hips. Conversely, for a glute focus, try leaning forward a little bit more at the hips during the squat. If anything, a more good morning style squat may be beneficial when it comes to targeting the glutes and the adductors. The third big component of technique for muscle growth is going to be range of motion. While tempo doesn't play a huge role with hyper as long as you're at ballpark, maybe around two to eight seconds per rep. And the exact effect of targeting the right muscle groups and minimizing momentum from other joints remains unmeasured within the science. Range of motion can have as big of an impact as five to 20% hypertrophy difference comparing the worst approach to the best approach. What's the best range of motion for your technique? Well, we absolutely want to make sure we get a stretch in the target muscle groups. In fact, some research suggests that lengthened partials where you only do the lengthened half of a movement may actually be better for hypertrophy than a full range of motion. So you could try lengthened partials on the Smith machine if you wanted to give this technique a try. We want the best stretch possible on the target muscle group. What does this mean? Well, for the quads, we want to maximize the knee flexion range of motion. To help you achieve this in the squat, try weightlifting shoes with a heel that allow you to get deeper in the squat, get more knee flexion without your heels coming off the ground. If you don't have weightlifting shoes, you can use plates underneath your heels as an interim solution. Conversely, for the glutes and adductors, we'll actually want to lean forward a little bit more to maximize hip flexion range of motion, as this will further stretch both the glutes and the adductors. If you want a good stimulus for both the quads and the glutes and adductors, just go deeper. Generally, if you go deeper, that'll increase range of motion and stretch at both the quadriceps and the glutes and adductors. Don't believe me that going deeper in the squat will cause more hypertrophy? Well, there's actually been a few studies on exactly that topic, one of which is a study by Kubo and colleagues. Here's what they did. They compared a shallower squat to a deeper squat. And you know what happened? Generally, hypertrophy was better in the deeper squat group. 
specifically in the glutes and adductors. I would recommend going as deep as you comfortably can, given your goals. Ultimately, if all you want was quad growth, there are better exercises out there, like the reverse Nordic curl. You can check that out in this video here. There are other studies in the quads, for example, broadly showing that getting to a longer muscle length is going to be beneficial for hypertrophy. The final factor in exercise technique is a more practical one, and that is preference and pain management. If you're doing all of the above, a good tempo, a good range of motion, making sure the target muscle group is a limiting factor, but you have a certain technique that you prefer using, it's more comfortable or you just enjoy it more, go for it. Likewise, if a certain technique hits the above but consistently gives you pain, don't feel like you have to use that technique. Feel free to play around until you find something that works better for you. You'll notice I didn't say anything about the heels raising off the ground or some butt wink or even some spinal flexion being that bad for you. If you're pain free, and this isn't my expertise, you probably don't need to worry about it too much. You'll notice I haven't really talked about pointing your feet forward versus out and taking a shoulder width stance or a bit wider. As long as you adhere to the general components of good technique, like for example, a sufficient range of motion, a good eccentric duration, making sure that the target muscle group is the one that's limiting performance. The stance width or the degree to which you point your toes out probably doesn't play a huge role. So if you find that one stance or one approach allows you to get much deeper, go for it. But the truth is, as far as the research goes, we just don't have a basis to tell you that this stance or that stance is really any better. Without further ado, here's the perfect technique for squatting to maximize muscle growth step by step. First, set up safeties to fail height if you have them. Secondly, place the bar on your back. High bar may be marginally better, but both work. Place the bar on top of your shoulders for high bar. For low bar, place the bar on top of your rear delts. If you find the low bar placement is uncomfortable, try a false grip. Next, get your midfoot underneath the bar and bend your knees. Assume a shoulder width or narrow stance. Many people make the mistake of unracking the bar with their feet set too wide. While staying upright, unrack the bar by extending your knees. Many people make the mistake of needing to go on tippy toes to unrack. It's almost always better to unrack too low than too high. You can quarter squat a whole lot more than you can calf raise. A three-step walkout is most versatile in my opinion and accounts for most setups. First, perform a short step with your non-dominant foot backwards out of the rack. Second, perform a larger step right into your final position with your dominant foot. Finally, take a shorter step with your non-dominant foot to adjust into your final position. When performing these three steps, take your time. The better the position you end up in, the less energy you'll have to waste afterwards shuffling around into your final position. Where you look during the squat is down to you. During walkout, it's probably helpful to look at your feet so that you can tell where they're actually going. Now let's talk breathing. For most people, most of the time, you'll want to perform a Valsada maneuver. Take a big breath and brace your midsection as if someone were about to punch you in the stomach. Perform this maneuver in the first 25% of the rep or so. You can either do it at the top or just as you're starting the descent. To further improve intra-abdominal pressure, try a belt. Why can you breathe in and out during the first 25% of the squat? Well, at this point of the lift, the force production requirements are still pretty low and the moment arms of the spine are pretty minimal. Giving you a bit more breathing room, pun intended, during the set can just make sure that you're not getting gassed out and thus ending the set early before your target muscle reaches close to failure. Next, break at both the knees and the hips at the same time. While the advice to sit back has become popular, it's probably needlessly limiting squat depth for many people and turning squats into a more hip extensor or glute focused exercise. Next, go as deep as you can. That is, if you want both quad and glute and outer growth. If you want to prioritize one or the other, just make sure the joint you're moving at is predominantly either the knees for the quads or the hips for the glutes. Even if some butt wink occurs or if you have some spinal flexion, if pain isn't present, and the exercise still feels safe, you probably don't need to worry about it. As a starting point, try a two second eccentric or descent phase and slow down as you reach the very bottom of the squat. When you're at the very bottom of the squat, pause for about half a second to a second. And then perform an explosive lifting phase, ascending as quickly as you can. Once you reach the top 25% of the rep or so, you can breathe out at any time. I would recommend performing squats for sets of five to 10 reps and not anything above that. Doing much more than that will often be limited by breathing versus your actual target muscle. Now that I've broken down the perfect technique for the squat, let me break down how this compares to what we think is best for hypertrophy based on the evidence. First, our repetitions will take at least three seconds or so with a two second eccentric and explosive concentric and generally using a tempo that will have you spend more time at lower muscle lengths. By slowing down the eccentric at the very bottom, by pausing in that bottom position, 
we're accentuating that stretched position. Next, as far as range of motion goes, we're making sure we're targeting long muscle lengths. By using weightlifting shoes and therefore increasing range of motion at the knee, and by prioritizing range of motion at the joint and muscle group of interest, we're making sure we're training at long muscle lengths. Additionally, the squat is already a pretty length and biased exercise. The hardest part of the movement is near the bottom. If you wanted to take this a step further, and this is what I do, you could perform length and partials on a Smith machine. And finally, we are making sure the target muscle group is the limiting factor by prioritizing motion at the joint slash muscle group that we're interested in. If you use the technique I'm recommending here, you'll have successfully ticked all of these boxes. Try this as a starting point and adjust it from there if you find a stance more comfortable or if a specific technique causes you pain. That was the perfect technique for squat to increase your muscle growth. If you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe. If there are any other exercises you would like to see me break down from a scientific perspective, what the best technique is, leave them down below and I'll get to it. But in the meantime, have a great day and I will see you next time. Peace.